there's a there's a great book, um, a small book actually, surprisingly. I'm trying to remember what the name of it, but it's Marguerite Rosas. She's a an economist who has really studied the budgets and and in in the United States in particular, and basically showed made this really interesting case that that no what when you when when even under No Child Left Behind and things like that, people wanted okay spend these dollars and get this outcome. Like reading first was part of that. And yet the way the budgets actually work, no one can tell what the money bought. Right. <laughs> right. Well, my, you know, this young man is telling me that, you know, they get faced. So, so we've got all this money. We've got to spend it so we can ask for this much more money next year. What do we spend it on? And they, he claims that they just buy all kinds of stuff that never really gets used. And oh. of course, of course, there's all sorts of administrators who God yeah, knows yeah. what they do. You know, one of the things she found was that when, when because they they're economists, they know how to d drill into yeah. this data. Is they found that there's more spent on cheerleaders than there is on any of the basic subjects. When you just do it on a per capita, you know, like the amount of money is spent on cheerleading, it far exceeds the math and the reading and everything else that it's supposedly is where the values are, but it's like, it's not true. Well, maybe it'd be better spent there. I'm not sure. <laughs> Actually, I, 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 I think there's an argument to be made it, similar to your case about there being, you know, just less of school is that schools were a flatter, the power structure of schools historically were much flatter is because they're right. in the United States in particular, they're so locally controlled. It used to be, particularly pre-war era, right. used to be very, you know, essentially kids only had, you know, a, a layer or two of bureaucracy above them before they could have access to actual decision makers. And homeschooling is the ultimate flat, you know, it's like media. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.